Okay, in this little section here of chapter 12, we are going to take a look at prediction. And we can do prediction using the regression line, which means that we can figure out an x value from a y value or a y value from a given x value. Now, if we have a good line of best fit and we feel comfortable with the results, you can use the equation for interpolation. Now, interpolation is when we are looking for numbers of x and y within the domain of where we started. So interpolation is finding values of x and y within the domain of x. So that is basically within the beginning and ending of the moment that we were measuring in terms of its x values. Now we can use the regression line to find possible values of x or y. Finding y values is the easier of the two. So here's an example. We found this equation from the previous section to be a good predictor of students' success in math class by looking at how many hours of homework they did per week. The linear equation is y hat equals 5.7375 plus 9.079x. Or to translate this, starting at 5.7 points, that's points for the whole class. The class would probably be, be out of 100 points or percentages. Starting at 5.7 points, you add 9.1, see how I rounded there? 9.1 points for each hour of homework per week. Okay, I'm going to clean up that word each. Just didn't look too good when I was writing it there. Okay, for each hour of homework per week. So the first question is, it's going to be the easier question because it's going to solve for y here. What would your final grade be if you worked 8.5 hours a week? Okay, so that means this 8.5 hours a week, that is the x value. And what would your final grade be would be the y value. So we take our equation, y hat equals 5.7375 plus 9.079, and then multiply that by 8.5. So I will get my answer for y as long as I just type this into the calculator. So any calculator will do. You got your graphing calculator probably. So we go 5. 7375, might as well use all the decimals since it'll give me a more accurate answer, plus 9.079 times 8.5. I can use parentheses or the multiplication key, and that's going to give me an answer of 82.909 points. So that's my answer. Y is equal to 82.909 points or roughly an 83% in the class. So working about eight and a half hours a week gets you a nice B. Now, how many hours a week would you need to get a 90 in the class? Let's say you're shooting for that 90%. Well, in this case, the equation, we know the, um, we don't know the hours in the week, so we're trying to find our X here, but we do know the Y in this case. So the equation starts out as 90 is equal to 5.7375 plus 9.079x, which means that we're going to subtract, and you go, I mean, we're going to get x by itself, so we're basically going back to the algebra that we did in classes before this. So we subtract the 5.7375 from itself and from 90. That will cancel out and make 0 and this to subtract to make 
4 and 265 thousandths. And then this over here just drops straight down to 9.079 or 9 and 79 thousandths x. Now since the 9 and 79 thousandths x is multiplying by x, to get rid of that we do the inverse operation which is dividing. So you divide both sides by 9 and 79 thousandths. So those two simplify. I know you like to say cancel, but they simplify to make one. And 84.265 divided by 9.079 gives you a decimal where x is approximately 9.28. And in terms of its units, it's in terms of hours a week. So if eight and a half hours will get you a B, nine and a quarter hour will get you the A minus. Just that little extra time during the week will push you over the edge. Okay, so here's another example. Now, we found this equation from the previous section to be a good predictor in student failure in grad class by looking at how many hours per day they did non-academic screen time. And here's the equation. To translate, you start, or you could just say starting, you start at 103.27% or points and drop by 10.325 points for each hour of screen time per day. Okay, so what would your final grade be if you watched one hour per day? Okay, so that's pretty much figuring out if we have the one, that's our x value. Okay, final grade, that would be our y value. So here we have our y hat is equal to 103.27 minus 10.325 times 1. Well, I just type that into the calculator, and anything times 1 is itself. So the y prime is equal to this minus this, which I've done ahead on the calculator. So 92.945 points. All right, so here we are. Looking pretty good there. Now, how many hours a week if you earn a 25 in the class? Oh, boy. Let's see how much time you wasted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, um, oops, <laughs> made that little mark there. Uh, this 25 in the class, that is my y value, and I just don't know my x value. So this y hat is known in this case. That y hat is 25. So in this case, the equation starts off with 25 is equal to 103.27 minus 10.325x. Now I need you to be very careful in this problem. Because there is a subtraction sign in this problem, you got to be very careful with your symbols and your operators. So to get the x by itself, we're going to subtract the 103.27 from both sides. Okay, We subtract the 103.27. Now those simplify. Now be very careful. On your calculator, when you go 25 minus 103.27, that is a negative. That is negative 78 point 27 okay that's important now we're going to bring down the equal sign we're gonna bring down the subtraction sign which is now gonna look like a negative and this is a 10.325 X okay so now we need to get the X by itself okay we're gonna divide both sides by negative 10.325 now we need to have that subtraction sign as a negative because we need the answer to be positive, because two negatives make a positive. So now what we get is x by itself. These simplify. And when you do this on the calculator, make sure you use the negative keys right here by the um, enter key. So this is negative 78.27 divided by negative 10.325. If you do those two correctly, you get an answer of about 7.58 hours per day. So if you're spending all that time messing around instead of studying, well, you're going to be in trouble taking those grad classes.
So there's your problem, 7.58 hours a day. Now let's go to extrapolation. Now the extrapolation, which is not the same thing as interpolation, extrapolation is going outside of the domain. This is when you go outside of the boundary that you had in the original problem. So if you remember, um, the problem that dealt with the used cars measured from buying up to like from from a small amount from like 1.3 to 1.4 or say 1.4 1.5 all the way to 63 so that would be and that was in terms of tens of thousands but let's just say that our domain was going from 1.4 to 63 extrapolation would then go beyond 63 uh, numbers higher than that or would go below 1.4 numbers below that the warning about going extrapolation is when you do that your data is not guaranteed to be as accurate as you were going between um, the x values that you searched out in the problem so you can extrapolate you can go beyond your domain but the warning is that you're not guaranteed the same statistical, um, the word I'm looking for is confidence, when you do so. So please, extrapolate at your own risk. But the problem with extrapolation is that sometimes when we look at a series of dots, like let's say we looked at these dots of those cars, for example, the cars that kind of made up that problem, you can see that they kind of make a straight line, but sometimes when you go beyond, sometimes the dots curve and then you start to realize it could be um, a, a parabolic or quadratic curve where it's going to kind of like make a rainbow shape. But we just happen to look at the part of the rainbow that was increasing. and Or the same thing could go if you looked on the other side of the dots where the dots could level off and now it's exponential instead of linear. So again, be very, very careful when extrapolating because when you start to extrapolate outside of your original data set, you may not actually fit the linear pattern that the data set um, had in front of you. And this is also a little shout out to the fact that there are other shapes of curves. Uh, there are, and you know, linear, the ones you've been studying so far, but there are exponential and quadratic and Whew, there's lots of other shapes out there, but really the linear um, regression line is, is the important one, but just know that there are others. All right, well, thank you for watching this little short section on finding X and Y values using interpolation from your um, line of best fit.